Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to configure our machine to use a custom DNS for faster internet. We'll set up a couple of different machines, explain what we're doing, and have a pro tip if you stick around to the end of the video. We navigate to our web page, click the down arrow in the upper right hand corner, select settings, then network. Let's scroll down to setup. You can set up most popular devices using these instructions. We're using Linux here. Let's click the gear icon. We select the IPv4 tab, turn off the automatic DNS. Then we input the DNS resolver address 1.1.1.1 and our secondary one, which is 1.0.0.1. A comma separates the two. While we're here, let's do IPv6. Let's click the tab. We'll copy the DNS resolver addresses over. We'll put them in the DNS box. Then we turn the DNS automatic to off. We could also choose the automatic DHCP only box. Let's make sure everything looks okay. Then we hit apply. If you are using Wi-Fi, then you should set that up too. You will need to set up all the connections that you use. It is the same procedure as the wired connection. We set the IP version 4 primary and secondary addresses. We turn off the automatic DNS. Let's set up the IP version 6 for good measure. We set the address of the DNS server and we set automatic DNS resolution to off. Basically means to use the DNS server that we give it. Then we turn Wi-Fi off for the changes to take effect. Turn it back on in a couple of seconds if you want to use that connection. Let's reset the wired connection in much the same way. Turn it off, wait a few seconds, and then turn it back on. Good to go, G. Let me tell you a little story. One day, I was trying to download a machine learning Docker image from NVIDIA NGC. After about 45 seconds, I received a rather cryptic error message. It says, no connection. I want to make sure I have an internet connection, so let's ping Google. Google responds. But then I remembered I was having a little bit of trouble downloading things from GitHub. There was always about 15 seconds of lag before it would start downloading. So let's ping GitHub. And here's the problem. If you are an experienced developer, you know what the problem is. Ping is a two-step process. The first step resolves the domain name into a numerical internet protocol address. For the second step, the computer sends an echo request message to that IP address and waits for an echo reply message in response. When the echo reply is received, Ping displays the round trip time for those messages. That's the latency between your computer and the server you are pinging. In our example, the computer sends a DNS query to find out the IP address of github.com. We expect a DNS lookup to take a fraction of a second, but in this case, it's taking a long time. You can think of a DNS server as acting like an old school phone book, converting names into addresses. A DNS server caches IP addresses. Because my internet service provider is a cable company, it makes sense that it caches IP addresses that its customers are most likely to use. Services like Netflix, Amazon, HBO, and the like. If you're anything like me, you are surprised that downloading machine learning Docker images is not at the top of the list. Even more surprising, there's a lag to load the page where you sign up for the Jetson Hacks newsletter. I wrote a little program to show the resolve time of various websites. Here you can see the problem. To resolve the NVIDIA address, it takes 15 to 20 times longer than websites that are in the cache. When we run it a second time, you can see that everything is cached locally. Now, if you're new to all this, you could find the answer a different way. The tried and true method is to trace system calls using strace. Find the calls that are taking the most time. I have found that ChatGPT is useful for deciphering the strace output. Eventually, you will find that the time is being spent on DNS calls. One way around this issue is to use a custom domain name server. There are many public DNS servers to choose from. Here are the three I usually use. First up is Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a content delivery network. It carries about 20% of the traffic on the internet. It touts speed and privacy as its major advantages. Next up is Quad9. They're big on privacy and security. 
And finally, we have Google. You might have heard of them. Because DNS is part of the backbone of internet structure, these providers have a worldwide reach and hardened security. They need to be able to fend off denial of service attacks, while at the same time being able to synchronize the addresses of millions of websites. Looking at dnsperf.com, we see that Cloudflare is usually the fastest DNS resolver. You can also examine uptime and quality to help you make a decision on which to use. Cloudflare also has DNS resolvers that block malware and ones that block malware and adult content. Adult content? That must be for those of you watching Mimes, you dirty, dirty boys. Earlier in the video, we set our DNS resolver to point to Cloudflare. Let's have a go to make sure everything works as we expect. We'll ping GitHub. It's resolved immediately. Now we look at the table for resolve times. We see that nvcr.io resolves in a reasonable amount of time. Jetson Hack seems a little slow. When we run it again, everything's cached locally. Now let's docker log in into the NVIDIA server. There's a little wait, and then we log in successfully. All is good in the world now. If you are running Ubuntu 18.04 on a Jetson, like a Nano, the setup is only slightly different. We can see the issue with the resolve times here, and we can see the issue with the ping time. We scroll down to the Setup section and select Linux. Then we open up the System Settings. We open up Network. Let's do wired first. We'll choose options. Click on IPv4 settings. Then we set the method to automatic DHCP addresses only. Now we set up our DNS server 1.1.1.1 and our secondary to be 1.0.0.1. .0 .0 We'll set up IPv6 while we are here. Let's grab our DNS addresses. Of course, you will remember to set the method to addresses only. I did not do that the first time through. We save our changes. Then we cycle the connection by turning it off and then back on. Now we will set up the wireless. We need to set up all of the wireless connections for this machine. It's the same process as before. Click Settings. IPv4 Settings. Set the method to addresses only. Then we set the DNS address. We set up IPv6 while we are here. Then save. Again, I forgot to set the method. You will need to do that if you want it to work. Then we cycle the connection, disconnect, and then connect again. Now we check on our resolve times. Everything is good. I love it when a plan comes together. A couple of pro tips. First, instead of setting all the devices on your network to point to a new DNS resolver, set up your router instead. That way you only need to do one setup. Make sure that you write down the current DNS. Some ISPs have safeguards that won't allow this method. You may have to revert. Second, if you change the router DNS, attach a label which says, remember to set the DNS. That way, when you swap out the router in the future, you'll remember to set the new router up in the same way. I won't say why I had to learn this trick. Thanks for watching.